Now a lot of people buying a second hand boat want to know is it worth buying a second hand boat that's got an old two stroke engine on it? Well that's a really good question, I'll cover that here and I'll explain why I own both a two stroke engine and a four stroke engine. Put simply, the difference between a four stroke and a two stroke engine is that a four stroke actually takes four strokes of the piston before it produces the power that fires an con internal combustion engine, whereas a two stroke just takes two strokes of the piston. So the fact that a two stroke engine fires on every second stroke means that they launch a boat out of a hole really well. They have a lot of torque behind them as opposed to just power, where a four stroke engine, it's all about the power. and Four-stroke engines are a lot bigger, they're a lot bulkier, there's a lot more moving parts to them. They're a lot more expensive to make as opposed to a, a two-stroke, which is a lot lighter, a lot smaller. And I say a lot, but these days the four-stroke engines are getting down in weight. They're only about 10 to 15% heavier than what a two-stroke of a similar horsepower would be. So there's not a massive difference there anymore. But when you consider bolting more weight to your transom slows your boat down even more, and having a torquier two-stroke that's lighter actually makes a fair bit of difference to your boat. Now let's have a look at this diagram and a basic rundown on how a two-stroke engine works. With two-stroke engines, the fuel and oil mix, along with the air, enters the engine through the inlet valve, which is also called a reed valve. This mix of air and fuel enters the engine below the piston where it can also lubricate the crankshaft. Because you've got to remember with two-stroke engines, the oil of the engine is actually mixed in with the fuel. So if no fuel is getting to an engine part, it's not getting lubricated. As the piston falls down the cylinder, the air and fuel mixture pushes up into the top of the chamber where it can be ignited and the piston moves back down to the bottom of the cylinder. Then the process starts all over again. The piston moves down the cylinder and the air and fuel mix is pushed back up to the top of the cylinder. But as it does, it also pushes the exhaust fumes out at the same time. Some of the air and fuel mixture also escapes while it's pushing these exhaust fumes out. This is one of the reasons why two-stroke engines use a lot more fuel. You're actually pushing your exhaust fumes out with your new fuel mix. And as a result, some of that new fuel mix is being pushed out with the exhaust fumes. I remember some mornings looking at the back of my two-stroke and seeing a little oil slick sitting on the water. That's some of that new air and fuel mix that's been pushed out with the exhaust fumes and it's unburnt oil lying on the surface of the water. Not real environmentally friendly, I'm afraid. Another thing that doesn't make it really environmentally friendly is all that oil that lubricates the engine is burnt off. As opposed to a four-stroke engine, the oil sits in the sump and lubricates all the moving parts, and you need to change it every 100 hours or so. With two-stroke engines, unfortunately, all that oil is just getting burnt. So compare the two-stroke to this diagram of how a four-stroke engine works. The crank and many of the parts in a four-stroke engine are bathed in oil permanently. Many four-stroke engines don't even have a bearing because the crank can spin on a very smooth machine surface because it's soaked in oil. But what really makes the four-stroke engine work is the cylinder head that has valves in it. The inlet valves open to let the fuel and air mixture in, and the outlet valves or the exhaust valves open up to let the exhaust fumes out. So this makes your four-stroke engine a completely enclosed system. The fuel doesn't go into an open chamber like in the two-stroke, it's in a closed chamber, so no air and fuel is being leaked out while it's pushing, pushing exhaust fumes out. It's all a completely closed system. What some engine manufacturers like Evinrude and uh, Mercury and other, Mercury with their Optimax, Evinrude with their E-Tech, what they did, they built next generation two-stroke engines and they made them fuel injected. So the fuel gets injected into the cylinder when the exhaust fumes are already been pushed out. And this makes it a lot more efficient you're not throwing away uh, fuel and oil mix that isn't burnt. You're ejecting that fuel and oil into a closed system. And it is making these engines a lot more efficient. But the problem is they're still burning all their oil. So they're still not really environmentally friendly, which is why now you can't even buy one of these engines. Yeah, so why do I have a one four-stroke and one two-stroke outboard? Well, on my little boat here, I've got a 30 Yamaha, which is a two-stroke. Now this little 30, the blue band, has a three cylinder engine, three carbies in it. It's a hundred to one fuel mix as opposed to most other two strokes, which are 50 to one and some are even 25 to one. So it's a light fuel mix. So it doesn't burn too much oil or burns half the amount of oil that most do. And it runs really nicely. It doesn't smoke up or anything like that. But being a two stroke, 
This little three-cylinder gives me a lot of torque for such a small engine. And look, it's ideal for a boat like this. A four-stroke engine on a boat like this, that's great also. But I heard that these were getting sold out, that they were getting phased out. And this is one of the last ones that I found for sale, which was through a mate of mine. So it was a good win getting hold of it. And I love this engine. It's super reliable. It's so easy to fix. It hardly ever gives me any troubles at all. I've done a couple of bushes in the prop, but to the engine, I've never had any issues whatsoever. So, look, these are still a great engine. If you find a boat that's fairly small, say less than 50 horsepower, and it's got a good quality two-stroke engine on it, I wouldn't hesitate buying it all. I think they're a great engine. Now, a lot of people will say that you'll get a lot more um, hours or you know years out of a four-stroke, and that's probably true. But if you run a two-stroke quite often, then you'll get a really good run out of them. They like to be ran all the time. So this thing's on the water every week. I run it all the time. But if you, at least once a month, once every two weeks, if you can get your engine out on the water, then you'll do really well with the two-stroke. Look, they're great little engine. And now this bad boy, 70 horsepower Yemi. Look, this boat's only four or five months old. Engine's brand new, fantastic. Now, the reason why I haven't got a two-stroke on this, two reasons, I can't buy them anymore anyway, and this is a brand new engine, so that's the biggest thing. But where this really, really pays off with having a four stroke in it is this boat's four and a half meters, so it's fairly small. It is a big plate boat, so it's fairly heavy. It has an 80 liter under fuel, underfloor fuel tank. And with this engine, if I don't push it too hard, if I just run it on say about four and a half, five thousand revs, I can get really, really good mileage out of this four stroke engine with the fuel that's in this boat. So I can go long trips out to some of the more remote rivers, um, See, my partner and I next month is planning a big trip up to Taurus. So that's you know going to be a 400 odd K round trip once we get back. So we're going to use a lot of fuel in that. So look, the big four stroke is ideal. I wouldn't buy a second end two stroke that's say over 50 horsepower. Look, they're just burning too much fuel. They're not great for the environment. Um, and you know, 50, 60 horsepower, um, as you can see, this is a 70. Uh, you'd be crazy not to get a four stroke. That's just my opinion anyway.